Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Professional 2022 tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. Alright, so one thing to explain is the different model types of shells and using the power of video editing, I will define quickly a slab, so there it is. Now, please notice that before I have covered the shell element and explained it in detail, so I'll keep it like that for now for comparison purposes. And if I apply and calculate now, you can see that everything works fine and uh, the slab behaves exactly as I want it to be. Now, there will be a separate video for typical mistakes or errors in robot, but for now, let's right click first, select display settings, and go to the load display settings. Now, I want to open something called load distribution regions and forces added or generated automatically with their values and symbols of course so if I hit OK you can see that nothing changed well the only thing that changed is I simply opened and closed the forces well if I add for example now a beam very quickly a reinforced concrete beam around the slab I'm just gonna quickly define me a beam yes okay of course it's warning me that it's changing the analysis now but I agree with that so let's define a very quick beam around this little slab and for explanation reasons I'm gonna delete the self weight all right so if you run the analysis again everything seems to be fine now the slab is stiffer and that's why the deflection is smaller but there is still deflection the slab is stiffer because now there are beams around the slabs so you can open and close the cross section of beams using this button all right so if you go to results diagrams for members you can see that there is a moment diagram on the beams all beams are simply supported exactly how I am expecting it to be. Those are the moments applied on the beams from the slab. <clears throat> All right, fantastic. So uh, let's talk about the different models used in floors. <clears throat> so you can see if you click on the three buttons here, you see a lot of possible uh, models that you can do. Now I'm going to say my model here, basically, because I want to add something. And I don't want to change the shell that is used in the models here I want to add my own model now first of all I want my model to have finite element elements basically so if you click on that the only finite element that is used is shell I've explained this in the discrete Kirchhoff Mindelin triangle and quadrilateral so I'll just keep it like that also I don't want to have any diaphragm however I want instead of the software calculating the loads using the finite element I want the software to calculate the loads using the trapezoidal or, or triangular method. So if you click on simplified, you can see that you have two options, either one way or two way. Let's keep it one way, click add, say close, and now I have my model to be chosen. Now, it's not really a good name. I should change it, for example, to say uh, my model X or something, but I'll just keep it for now as a very generic name. Now, to apply this model, of course, you can first of all delete this slab and redraw it. An alternative is to select the slab from your object inspector, or like this, just select the slab, it's selected now, and you can see that the model is a shell, as you can see here from the drop-down menu. Now you can select my model, which means that the model now is my model, my defined model. Now if you run the analysis, lo and behold, only two beams carry moment, and if the other two beams don't carry moment. Now what just happened? You see, what just happened is that I have asked robot to consider my slab a one-way slab. Of course, if I ask this to be two-way slab, it will become a two-way slab. But wait, there are two questions. The first question is, why did, how did the load distribute? And well, you can see from the bending moment diagram that the load has distributed in this direction. However, if you want to actually see uh, the load distribution, if you try to open loads, you don't see the loads distributed on the beams. Now, to see advanced display settings, you right-click on anywhere here and click on display. Now, we are asking about the loads that were carried by the beams. So there is a tab called loads. Now, there is something called here load distribution regions and something called here forces generated automatically. If you apply that, you can see that Autodesk Robot shows you the load distribution region. It shows that this beam takes half of the slab and this beam takes half of the slab. It even shows you the load value, which is 12.5. Now, 12.5 is basically 
5 kilonewton meter square multiplied by 2.5. So Robert is perfectly capable of calculating the one-way and two-way approximate method using the triangles and trapezoids perfectly. So, well, we have seen that. Now the question remains, why did Autodesk distribute the load in the X direction? Now the answer would surprise you. It has nothing to do with the length and width of the slab. It has something to do with the uh, local direction of the slab. You see, the one-way distribution that is available in the floors menu here actually distributes in the x-axis automatically. Now, what is the x-axis of the slab? If you click on local systems, you can see that the x-axis of slab is the same as the x-axis of the global system. Now, how can you force, for example, how can you force the load distribution to be in the y direction? Now, before that, the question is, why would you do that? Because maybe you have a ribbed slab, and in ribbed slabs, you can force the distribution of loads based on the orientation of ribs. You can basically rotate this local axis by redrawing the slab, if you want, basically deleting it and redrawing it so that the first line is in the y-axis. Or, or you can go to geometry and go to properties, and here you have something called local member directions, which is for bars, and local panel directions, which is for floors. Now, if you click on that, you can actually change the z-axis or define the local x-axis in the direction of something. So now what you're doing here, you're telling robot that your local x-axis for a plane or a floor is going to follow the following vector. And I'm going to draw a vector from here to here. So now this is my local, this vector defines my local x-axis. Now, okay, since I have defined it, on what am I going to apply this? Well, I click on panel like this, select my panel, hit apply, and of course, robot is going to ask me that things are going to change. Yes, I agree with that. And you can see now that the x-axis of the plate has switched and is now in the global y-axis. Now, if I run the analysis now, you will notice that the other two beams got loaded because, remember, I'm asking robot to perform a one-way analysis and the one-way analysis using this option is always going to be in x-axis now of course you can once again right click and click on display settings and hit on loads and say for example loads distribution regions and automatic generated loads like this hit ok or apply and you can see the distribution is now in the y direction what happens if i ask for two-way well let's just modify our system into two-way saying yes Rechanging our analysis, rerunning our analysis, and of course you can see now that you have trapezoids and triangles. Now you don't see trapezoids because this is perfectly square, however, you can see the two-way distribution quite obviously. So this is one way of doing a one-way and two-way distribution system, and the advantage of this system is that you can see the deflection of the plate because the plate or the floor is being analyzed using the finite element method. And you can see that there is deflection because the if, if you define a floor using a, a finite element shell, then it not only calculates the load distribution, but also calculates the deflection on that shell, which of course means that the stiffness matrices of those elements are evaluated, which means it takes a little bit more time to calculate. Now, if you are not interested in the deflection of the slab and only want to distribute the load of the slab on the beams, there is an option to do that. So I'll just delete the floor now, and you can see the floor is now deleted, and the only things you have now are your four beams. And you can define a floor without a finite element analysis, just a load distribution floor, by going to geometry and defining a cladding. Now, how you define that? There is an option called claddings. If you click on that, now you can select any cladding and notice the cladding can distribute in X and in Y. Now, X and Y in this case are based on the local X and Y of the slab. Of course, you need to be careful when you define the local system. For example, I want this to be in X. So, okay, if I define a contour in a rectangular manner, if I click 1, 2, I just click those two points. This means that the x axis is in this direction in the local in the global x. If I click on that, you see the cladding has this weird line in the middle to differentiate between the cladding and the floor. The cladding will not give you any deflection. I'll just put a load very quickly on that cladding. So uh, let's select the 
case and go to surface load and apply a load on that cladding and now I have a load on the cladding if I calculate the cladding now it will first of all distribute the forces as you can see in diagrams for members my it's in X so you see it's distributed in X you can also right click and go to display and once again go to loads you know the drill select distribution regions and you can see that perfectly this is exactly the same as if you have chosen with your model here the one-way system however there is one difference the difference is that because you used claddings now you don't have any results for the floor it's not calculated if you, even if you go to results maps you can see that there is no maps at all because there are no floors defined however if you now define by the magic of video editing a floor with the finite element now and run the analysis now my floor here is two-way and you can see this from the deflection shape as well as the load distribution regions if you want so it's a two-way however this is better than cladding because now you can see that there is deflection and you can also go to the maps and see the moment in y direction on that floor now it seems to be a garbled mess because you are asking for moment y and you're also asking to show the load distribution regions so well you need to switch off the load distribution regions to see the maps basically so if you click on that you can see that you have a map this was unavailable in claddings but available in shells why because shells are being calculated whereas claddings are only here to distribute loads still being a shell and being calculated means a little bit more calculation effort so you should choose whichever application you need and fits your purposes if you have any special requests for that please leave a comment and tell me what you want i hope that this video was beneficial for you and if it was please subscribe share comment and the liking this is the civil engineering essentials channel and we will see you in future videos